Hey preppers, Rich Lang with Prep U. Well, surviving in the desert, I don't know how you got here. I don't know if you're alone or if you're with somebody else, but you're there, you're in the desert now, and it's hot and it's dry, limited vegetation, and you got nothing with you. Well, maybe you don't. Again, it all depends on how you got here in the first place, as if you'll have anything with you. Anything in your hands, pockets, whatever. Hopefully you got something. Hopefully you got a car kit, a desert kit, some kind of kit that you can have some of these items. I'm sitting here right next to my solar still. It's actually going to give me some water. I can use limited vegetation. I can use damp sand. I can use all kinds of stuff. I can pee in there. And the evap ev evaporation process here in the desert will actually bring me up water onto the plastic sheeting and then down into my cup. It may take a while, but you're going to be hanging out in the shade. Let's talk about surviving in the desert, though. That's really important. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to take my sunglasses off. It is really sunny here right now. Um, so I can actually read my writing because without my glasses, I can't read it. So here you are. You're in the desert. What do you do? What do you need to do before you even end up in this position? So definition of a desert is basically lack of rainfall. And it's something you need to find as fast as possible if you don't have any. Um, your priority, your first priority is water. OK, your second priority is shade um, in the desert. If you find shade, the temperatures can actually drop. 10 to 15 degrees in the shade in the desert. Um, so that's really, really important. Um, and the other thing is, is getting out of the desert, getting somewhere where there's people, um, where there's water, where there's uh, more shade. You can work your way out depending on how deep of the desert uh, you really are. Uh, something you want to do in the desert is not move during the day. Uh, it's just too hot. Unless you're looking for shade, obviously, you've got to find some shade. You can't be out in the middle of the desert like this and and exist. Uh, so you want to make the use of night for travel, to look for shelter, uh, to find a water source. You also have to remember that temperatures at night can drop by as much as 50 degrees. Nice. Temperature isn't so bad. But the thing you have to worry about is now you have to worry about hypothermia. So... If you're stuck in the desert, wherever it is, and you're driving, maybe say in a nice air conditioned car or something like that, don't get rid of that sweatshirt that's in your suitcase. Don't get rid of that little bit of a jacket. Carry that with you. Wrap it around your waist. Take it with you because you're going to need it at night. Because um, it's very important to maintain your body temperature. It's, you know, without water and getting cold, you're going to get the shakes. You're not going to be able to sleep. You're not going to be able to move uh at all um one thing to look for which is really good is uh any hard surface any rock formation uh because uh if it gets windy it's not you know the, it's it's going to protect you from the sand it's going to protect you uh from the sun caves are great why are caves great although other animals might be in there so be careful uh is chances are you're going to find moist sand moist sand you can put in your solar still uh, and I don't know if I mentioned it, but look for our second video, second in a series of uh, uh, surviving the desert. We actually show you how we put this uh, solar still together. Um, so, like I said, it's cooler in the cave, possible source of water. Digging down, it may pool. Uh, another reason to have a, a life straw with you, which is really good. Um, a life straw is also good in this kit uh, so that if you use fluids that you aren't really sure about and even though you're evaporating the water out of it and you want to make sure that it's clean good water you can suck it through a life straw just remember when you first use that life straw the life straw itself is going to absorb some of that water so you're not going to get a lot of, through it the first time clothing light colors multiple layers is what you want if you ever saw the the movie uh lawrence of arabia if you notice or any uh, film from desert areas. They, they truly aren't wearing, well, some people are, some of the women are wearing full, I think it's, they're called hajibs, uh, full set and they're normally black. But if you notice a lot of the, 
the Arabs that are nomads and stuff like that have light colors. Their tents are light colored uh, because it doesn't absorb the heat. Uh, it's kind of, if you think about if uh, it's like being a fireman, uh, you look at fire gear and you go, oh my gosh, you're going into a fire with that heavy, heavy gear. Um, you know, you're going to places that are six, seven, 1200 degrees inside and you're wearing that heavy gear. Well, the thing about that heavy gear is it protects you uh, from the heat. So that's why multiple layers of light color are perfect because it forms a barrier between the extreme heat and your body heat. Is your, are you going to be warm? Yeah, but you're not going to roast. Um, and then also uh, it uh, protects from, like I said, the high air temperatures and it also uh, will get damp and then any kind of breeze will keep you cool through evaporation. Um, water. Uh, obviously take whatever you have with you, not alcohol. It only makes you thirstier. Um, you know, but like, and, and the note here he said, sorry, I'm having trouble talking out here. Um, you don't want to drink urine, but with the solar still, you're going to extract the, uh, the water out of it. Um, for your solar still and everything, look what's around you. Anything with green leaves contain water. Look for dry riverbeds, stream beds, and then dig down. Because you're going to find that if you dig down, especially if you go to an area that's shaded, because um, a lot of those riverbeds, the water stays in there. And if you find a shaded part, the day sun hasn't evaporated what's starting to come up from underneath. Uh, vegetation, um, you'll put in your solar still, and that will evaporate. Um, basically, what you're going to do is you're going to dig a two-foot diameter hole, two foot deep. I have, this one's about a foot deep. All right. Um, and then you're going to place the cup at the bottom with a, running a tube from the cup to one inch outside the hole, one foot outside the hole. Um, and what we have here is, uh, you can see, yeah, there's the tube and we have it in a protective uh, sandwich bag. You can get a, if you can find a cap, that would screw on that would even be better um, you're going to put green vegetation in the bottom and when you have the green vegetation small pieces slice it up um, break it up into small pieces uh, the uh, it's easier for uh, the sun to extract the uh, water vapor out of there um, you know and then you're going to spread your plastic around put anchor points down and uh, just wait and sit in the shade while that's doing it. So what to take with you in the desert? Um, just like the video earlier, I showed you about what I take on vacation when we go, uh, which is basically our glorified uh, bug out bag uh, and your car kit and your everyday carry. But when you're gonna be driving through the desert, uh, you could bring an extra kit and that's water as much as you can carry, all right? Um, you could actually put a uh, gallon uh, jugs in your car because and keep those gallon jugs in the car passenger area with you to keep them cool uh, because of the air conditioning okay um, I don't like plastic and heat because some of the chemicals of the plastic will leach into the water and you don't want that will it happen on a short trip no but it's still better to have cool water than super hot water but any water's better than nothing so a cup Plastic sheeting, extra clothing for the nighttime, uh, light colored clothing for the day, plastic tubing, small rocks, signaling device. In the desert, it's flat, it's low, and you, uh, you can signal long distance. You can see lights long distance. And if you have a signaling device, um, it really helps you out. A uh, baseball cap or a wide brim hat. This hat actually unsnaps and will fold down and cover my neck and shoulders. Knife always, sunscreen obviously, uh, shovel, gloves, a light source. You can see the light source right here that we have because when you travel at night and when you get to your location and the sun's starting to come up, build your solar still then, okay? And then have it all set, have your vegetation in there, your, your damp soil so that you can find the, the, the shade that you found to stop at, you can go to sleep. Okay, and you can rest because you've traveled all night and went and just check your solar still every so often and get some water out of that and high energy snack food, just something to get you through. Okay, something, an energy bar or something like that. Your water, water still kit, which is this, is just going to be a cup, plastic sheeting, plastic tubing, small rocks, shovel and sunscreen. 
you know, and then you you can, uh, this is in one kit. I have another kit that's the desert kit, which is the extra clothing plus cold weather clothing, life straw, cans of water, gloves, knife, and life source. You're going to have them together, but it's just, I just like keeping it separate instead of having a great big kit. You can put it in a, in a larger one. As I explained in the second video, put it all together if you want to. You know, there should really be a life straw in with this kit, which I'll change. Um, but you're also going to have your vehicle kit, your everyday carry, the five things bag. If you don't know what the five things bag is, take a look at our video about the five things you should always carry. Um, by having all this, you'll have some redundancy there. But depending on where you're at, then you can go through the different kits because you're not going to carry all that. You can go through the kits and grab what you need. Grab the extra water. Grab the extra energy. Uh, grab the clothing, uh, knife, uh, flashlights, batteries, if you're going to make a move. Something else you have to think about. Are you in the desert by yourself? Are you with somebody else? Are you with your family? Can they make the move? Should they stay someplace where there is shelter, where there is water? Um, a car is not a place to stay other than leaning off to the side of it in the shade. Uh, definitely don't want to stay in the car with temperatures reaching 50 degrees above what the actual temperature and people die that way. You definitely don't want to do that. Uh, redundancy will save your life. Here is a, here's kind of a, a diagram that I, I drew real quick. You can kind of see how the solar still looks from an angle and exactly what you're doing. So it gives you a better idea, but that's your solar still. Um, like I said, here it is beautiful. It's working out really good. Um, so, now, what I'm going to read here, this is, this is tips from a video that I made called Surviving in the Wild. You can look at that. Uh, we have that in our playlist. Uh, it's called Surviving in the Wild. But, you know, vehicle trouble, plane or train crash, boat accidents, or just got lost while on a half-day hike or a three-hour tour, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, the big question is when you are lost, like I was just saying, is stay or leave. You got to ask yourself. These are the questions you have to ask yourself about staying or leaving. Do you know where you are going? Do you know where you're at? Do you have any idea what's close by? Do you know what direction you're going? Good reason to have a compass. Uh, do you have the knowledge, the training, or experience in survival? Have you read up on survival? What to do, what to have, where you're going, and stuff like that. And it's not just where you're going, but it's what you tr the travel route. What's in between? You could live in the city and go into the mountains, but drive through the desert. What's the weather? Have you checked the weather out? Have you checked alternative routes? Have you taken maps with you to be able to get yourself out of there and find out where you're at? All right. Uh, because you might lose GPS. I know that's scary to some people, especially younger people thinking my phone won't work. I don't know where I'm at. I can't text. I can't tweet. I can't TikTok. What? Oh, my God. Um, are you alone or with others? That's a big question on if you're going to shelter in place or bug out, all right, or, or, uh, or leave, I should say. You know, and what you have to think about, what are the advantages or disadvantages to staying or leaving? Really have to think about that. You know, uh, there's an old adage when it comes to surviving, especially in an area like this, and it's, Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Let me show you. We are in a place where there is water, water everywhere. Let's see. And not a drop to drink. Welcome to Treasure Island, Florida, along the Gulf Coast. There's a lot of water out there ton of water out there more water than you could ever use can't drink it though but what you can do with that water with the vegetation you find if you're on a true desert island i don't know how you got there but if you're on a true desert island or somewhere out in you know who knows where in the desert and there's a, a salty lake or a lake that you just don't want to drink out of you can take that water or the vegetation that's in that water kelp whatever put that in your solar still and then you can extract the, uh, the water that's drinkable out of there because the salt won't, um, won't evaporate. It will stay, you know, basically in the sand and your water will evaporate and go up 
onto your sheeting and then down into your cup when you'll have something to drink. So just think about that. The stuff that we talked about here today really isn't just about being in the desert. It could be anywhere. And you have to think about the water sources that are available to you as to where you are, where you're driving or walking or whatever, and as to where you are going to end up. And like we always talk, whenever you're traveling, let people know that you're traveling there. Because if you don't show up, they know to come looking for them. Let, let them know your travel plans, where you're driving, where you're walking, where you're hiking, uh, the path. Make a plan and take a picture of it and send it to people that are important so they actually have a hard copy of which, where you're going and what you're doing. So that's it. That's surviving in the desert or where there's water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. So thanks a lot for watching. We really appreciate it. I am going to end this video and I'm going to go have some fun. I'm going to grab the wife. We're going to take a walk on the beach, look for some shells, and uh, go from there and see what plays out. It's an absolutely gorgeous day down here in Treasure Island, Florida. So thanks a lot. And as we always say, always be aware of your surroundings and the surroundings that you're going to. Always have enough food, water, medicine, ammunition on hand, whether you bug out or shelter in place. And please... Please, 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 please prep like your life depends on it because it really does. Thanks a lot. See you later. Thanks for watching.